welcome 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 back to another reaction video no other than self the programmer and by the judging by the title we already know what we're talking about we already know what we're up against we're asking how strong is gohan beast that's a good question let's get into it I'm gonna go ahead and start this up right now. Gohan, son of Goku, and probably the poster child for how to write a son when it comes to Shonen Battle series. <laughs> Gohan has been basically that crybaby kid who had insane potential that made all the veteran adults in his series open their eyes in shock whenever it was shown even remotely. Oh yeah. From headbutting a guy so hard that it made him croak over in agony shortly after this same dude tanked an attack that could turn the entire moon into dirt a guy who was dominating the entire universe and was basically nuking the strongest species in it with one finger and could easily wave a hand and blow away giant planets and possibly even stars that freaking freezer boy a pissed off five-year-old go on Every overpowered fighter in the entire series was basically put together into one guy, then given 80 billion pounds of steroids in plot armor, and just as he was about to blast away the entire solar system, gets vaporized once again by a by Gohan. through 11-year-old Gohan. As a reminder, this Gohan still don't know how that goes. Who still thought bullets from Bulma's handgun a guy who terrorized the universe and was slaying literal gods and galaxies and had just defeated pretty much every main mm -mm -mm. character that had trained for seven years straight. Exactly. And into oblivion by a 16 through 18 year old Gohan. Then after doing nothing for basically years, does a little training with Piccolo and can fight god level fighters who can punch away universes to save the multiverse. He has always been built differently. And see, yeah, he took the words right out of my mouth. Yes, he was built different. He he wasn't like a, he wasn't like the person that you would actually be find that he's not your average son. You follow behind his father's footsteps and everything. He had some rough patches, but at the same time, it's like he basically took in the yeses, took in the noes, but he was more so sort of kind of softy a little bit but you know gohan is that guy don't mess with gohan don't count him out you know he's pretty much like the guy that you can go to when you count on in the clutch that's the only time he shows up is in the clutch trust me on that he counts in the clutch and for those um, those are spoilers a while ago, so just in case those who haven't kept up with Dragon Ball um, Super, yeah, those are spoilers. So if you don't want to sit up there and be getting spoiled with anything like that, please, please, please don't let me spoil it for you. You know, just kindly just exit the video or if you want to stick around and just watch it with me and you're going to go back and look at it like I do. Hey, be my guest. Stick around and find out what's going on in this particular reaction Different. even a cocky guy like vegeta who only vegeta yeah were at birth for the longest time actually pretty much always gave gohan his accolades and respect uh-huh he did dragon ball superhero gohan does this once again but honestly on a level we have never seen before in a fight that pretty much makes it go on blanco and cell dorado unironically canon yeah, I'm wow. I'm not joking. I wouldn't be surprised if Gohan Calvo, El Hermano, or some dude that looks like Shaggy, stronger than Grant, <laughs> the next tournament of power at this rate. Dude, like, anyway, this video, we will be going over everything we know about how strong this canon Gohan Blanco is, as he is officially called Gohan Beast. And Gohan yeah, Beast. His actual name, by the way. Gohan Beast. Just like with my last video on Black Frieza, this video will be more of a hypothesis on Gohan's power rather than objective fact. We will more than likely learn okay. Gohan's pretty objective place on the pecking order in the next arc of Super. But for now, this video will be going over everything we know and have okay. been told about and calculated all from there. Dragon Ball Superhero is an interesting movie for a few reasons, but I think one of the biggest things about it, it is literally 
huge fan service. And yes, this is relevant to power scaling. Most of the movie is built. Hey, have you ever heard something like this? Oh my God. Who wants to make a zillion dollars online without having to do a single thing? Building up to how people there we go. used to feel about Gohan. How Gohan can be the strongest warrior around and has shown to be stronger than Goku and Vegeta when he's in the groove. Such as yes, Delta, when he's in the groove. This movie wants to call back to that with both Piccolo and Pan wanting to see Gohan reach that level once again. While Goku and Vegeta are more or less not in the movie and more so just training in the background. The movie also okay. takes place after the Granola arc, meaning yes, it takes place after Black Frieza. True after ultra instinct ultra ego gas granola moro etc as crazy as that sounds this is due to okay. the age of goten and trunks and the way the movie is promoted on the timeline and while there are some conflicting reports of it talking about being after frieza and broly there's also material that clearly references moro and granola as well as goten okay and ages that make it pretty hard to say it doesn't take place after these events for this video since the dragon okay. Ball anime stopped at broly we will be using a few elements from both the anime and the manga in our analysis here the antagonist of this movie is the red ribbon army and a scientist in oh lord the they're back in it again red ribbon army like i thought they would just get why don't they just give up gang a hard time Hito is even more capable than jero by far and can mimic all of these designs and then some on roids he has been watching goku and gang for really? a while and even has been watching battles such as the Moro battle, Broly battle, and much more, and then makes androids called Gammas capable of facing down this threat as if they're some type of superhero and that all the Z fighters are villains they have to defeat. With some really? They, they forever doing fighters, some extra Goku stuff. Vegeta forever. Strength due to this. The Gammas rivaling Goku and Vegeta make 100% sense narratively speaking for a few reasons, but the first one is that the last big battle Hito watched was the Moro arc, Thus, he would make the Gamma strong enough to beat Goku and Vegeta from that arc. However, really? due to them getting stronger during Granola, Hito wouldn't account for this insane evolution, and they would end up as rivals in strength. As a reminder, the last time Jiro watched Goku fight, he watched the Saiyan Saga battle. And he That's right. That's that right. That's right. Super Saiyan Goku after training for three years after Namek. So let that sit in. We'll let that sink in. Well, I'm personally yeah, I know, right? Gamma's being this strong. It is the point of the movie, and the androids have always just kind of done that. These dorky robots that are just as strong as the Z fighters, no matter what they do, for no reason. And Pick for no reason. Thinks the Gammas are Goku and Vegeta tier after fighting them. He's a great combat analyst, much more than most characters at least, and has not only trained Gohan perfectly to near Goku's level in just a day or two in the tournament of power but watch goku fight moro alongside vegeta pretty extensively as well as fighting moro himself he has also seen goku fight jiren and could sense the power level of broly and still makes this statement the second point of the gammas is that they are clearly a supposed to be the equivalent of goku and vegeta in the movie when the game okay. is cell max they have okay so one thing for sure we already know that um he pointed out real good that Piccolo, yes, he's basically a serial analyst. Like he likes like to, you know, let me get my mic right. There we go. He likes to get um give out information about a fighter. He likes to analyze it. He likes to do that. That's what I like Piccolo the best. He's str he's strategic when it comes down to stuff like that. Very strategic. And, you know, Piccolo is that man. He'll give you that work. He's a awesome top tier teacher. Like sometimes um, he's like, in a certain sense, he's like between Vegeta. He He's like that balance between Vegeta and Goku. Goku is kind of like a little playful with it. More playful with it, you know, nonchalant, yet serious sort of like i would say 25 75 maybe you know 25 serious you know on the other side you have vegeta doing the whole flip over in the opposite of what goku does he get he got sees he don't have no play he don't play the 25 percent does not play with him 25 percent does not play 75 he's all business 
But when it comes down to Piccolo, it might be, hey, between the two, it might be 2080, you know? But when it comes down to Piccolo, Piccolo gives you that 50 50, 55 45, or at least 60 40, you know, depending on give or take or what situation it is. It's like it's in the middle with Piccolo. That's why I respect Piccolo so much. He's like the only, like, seriously, he's like the only one, the only villain turned good guy that i will actually would like the most out of a group of people who good guys or good women good people whoever one you want to call it because there's a whole lot of them there's men and women that turn bad and then ultimately went back on the good side so you know piccolo is the man i mean i stand by that for real for real have the same powers the two of them grow stronger in battle just like the two of them do and one gamma even does a self-destructing maneuver to help everyone get an advantage on cell max i go over a lot more of these reasons in gohan beast versus gogeta blue i did with geekdom 101 and mjtv you can check out in the description if you're actually interested anyway for the most part okay. these gammas are goku and vegeta give or take piccolo then goes orange piccolo once again i'm not making that up he's called orange piccolo and one shots a gamma once again not making that he actually one wow. shot a gamma that he thinks is as strong as goku and vegeta and not only that but he does not retract his statement about them he actually doubles down on his statement after doing that that means this dude piccolo thinks he could one punch like saitama mode ultra instinct goku in the face and then fold him like a looney tunes character or at the very worst <laughs> super saiyan blue goku which i honestly wouldn't be surprised about either but you'd think hito would account for the forms beyond blue and piccolo would specify that he just meant blue and not the omen forms or something but okay. if you need a lot of copium, just say they mean blue Goku. I don't really care for whatever reason. Anyway, Cell Maxon comes in and not only can throw hands with this super orange Piccolo that could fold Goku and Vegeta, allegedly, but also the two Gammas that allegedly. rival them at the same time. The battle that then unfolds between Cell Max and all of these fighters is talked about in promotional material as, once again, and I'm not joking, the strongest battle in all of history. <laughs> Even if you just mean battles we've seen released at the point of the movie, wow. this would include UI Goku versus Jiren and Gogeta Blue versus Planning a family? Ooh. Your sperm count. You can man, test it. Ain't nobody want to talk about that mess right now, man. Broly. This is apparently a higher level. After Orange yes. is defeated and plays up his defeat a bit for Gohan, Gohan gives one of the rawest transformations I've ever seen in fiction, period. And absolutely terminator cell max despite cell max being this top tier powerhouse that jiren and broly would probably struggle with even being generous if you think he's weaker than them for whatever reason cell wow. Max can't even punch through gohan's aura that's right he doesn't just tank the attack with his body like gogeta does versus janemba gohan's aura is too strong for this dude to punch through meaning the difference between him and cell max is greater than Super Gogeta versus Janemba. And even when Cell Max condenses an energy blast as big as a continent, Gohan easily fodderizes it with a special beam cannon to the head and ends the day while Piccolo hypes up how Goku and Vegeta Wow. Him, in which Gohan actually agrees. The promo material for Beast Gohan also explains that Gohan in this form will now become the strongest warrior after releasing his latent potential. And I'm not kidding when I say that the absolute amount of statements for this are just stacked. Here's one from Toriyama as well, where he basically just says, Gohan is stronger than anyone, or so it's said, but late. Okay, let's read this. Gohan is stronger than anyone, they said, but lately has been gotten a chance to shine in order to motivate Gohan it takes a real teacher rather than his father see and that's what i'm saying that relate that correlates to what i was just saying he kind of like his father kind of like plays a little bit have like little fun with him and stuff like that but he doesn't give off that seriousness but that 25 percent seriousness culminated with the 50 the 60 i would say 60 probably a seriousness with with piccolo that's good that's the great mechanism that you need out of a guy like gohan gohan has that whole the whole thing with him he's basically just he has he's like he thinks about 
what goes on. He's thoughtful about the situation. He don't go in and head full head of steam, just like Vegeta does. Trunk sometimes does that too, but it's more so his father, Vegeta, that goes in with a full head of steam and don't think about the stuff. We've seen this countless of times. If you watch Dragon Ball Z and all the other stuff, yes, we've seen this countless of times. Vegeta's my man, man. Like, I'm telling you, Vegeta's my man. He's my man. But he need to cut that mess out and just leave that pride alone. He, he get his, he been getting his tail handed to him so many times in the freaking anime and the manga and all that. Like, that, man, I ain't even rep him sometimes. But I'm like, that's my dude, yo. And like, to this day, I can't even, like, wait until I actually get to that section on Dragon Ball Kakarot. Cause I'm running that back on, you know on Facebook gaming, but that's a whole nother channel, but that's my man, but he needs to cut that mess out with that pride though, you know? Lately, he hasn't really gotten a chance to shine, and in order to motivate Gohan, it takes his revered teacher Piccolo rather than his father, Goku. Exactly. Course, this is just supposed to be the fact that Gohan is supposed to be able to be the strongest, and the movie is just sort of reestablishing that information or that level yeah of pretty Meaning much at the very least even if you don't believe the gammas and cell max are gohan beast is absolutely putting goku and vegeta on a stretcher at probably the same time just like black frieza did the only counters really for this uh, that people seem to think are counters are the fact that cell max's battle feels a lot like a weird dragon ball heroes battle what Android 18 Krillin and Fat Gotenks helping to hold off really? Cell Max for some reason. It's sort of just kind of like all the Z Fighters jumping Omega Shenron at the end. And for some reason, Hercule can take a hit from Omega Shenron at full power and just be okay afterward. This is clearly just to have some <laughs> heroes join the fight. I remember that. I super remember that. Maybe sort of like base Goku. He took that hit. He ate Vegeta that mug, boy. But if you want to take it literal, Cell Max is probably just decaying by this point on some Fusion Zamasu type B after the Gamma's fought him with Piccolo. And or isn't really using his full power as he clearly uses more power later against Gohan Beast. The other denial point is that Toriyama said that if Cell Max was complete, he could beat Broly, implying Broly could beat him normally. The only problem with this is that Toriyama would be referencing a post-Gogeta movie Broly. Not Pretty Broly much. from the actual Broly movie. Most people seem to think that Broly would not get stronger after fighting Gogeta, and I have zero idea why. We even see huh. him clearly on Beerus's planet, and it's implied they've been training with him a few times. So no, Broly movie Gogeta still gets slammed, and the statements of Cell Max versus Gohan being the strongest battle we've ever seen can still be valid. Even if Broly in the background yeah. is stronger, we've just never seen how strong he actually is, other than the fact he's probably stronger than Cell Max, but that wouldn't apply to Broly movie Broly. Just this hypothetical trained Broly we haven't seen. I know, I right? Hypothetically. Cell Max didn't try unleashing his max power once again until Gohan Beast did appear, and I think the visuals and techniques used are indicative of that, as well as the statements. This also helps the movie make more sense alongside the things like Krillin and etc., so, you know, when Cell gets scared or he starts getting beat up more, it's potentially he either powered up or started just unleashing and rampaging. Exactly. He started rampaging. Yep. They were about to say he started rampaging all over the place. Piccolo says that without Gamma 2 sacrifice dropping Cell Max's power, they could have never won. This is not because Gohan Beast could not have beaten Cell Max, but because they never would have gotten the time to do so, and Piccolo never would have been able to restrain Cell Max or hold him off for long enough for Gohan to get hyped up and then transform when Piccolo was defeated. Nobody would have been able to fight him for that long, and even then, Cell Max clearly uses more power on Gohan Beast than he did on Piccolo. Oh my god. This game Just when it started getting interesting. You're not ready for it. Piccolo and the others, yeah. even when he is nerfed by Gamma 2's attack. I wouldn't be surprised if a hypothetical completed Cell Max was actually a rival to Gohan Beast, just like okay. Super Perfect Cell was to Super Saiyan 2 Gohan back in the Cell yeah, games. Yeah, exactly, and back in the Cell games. Headcanon, but I do think rationally that would probably make the most sense to me from a writing standpoint. And until Super continues, we'll have to deal with a lot of speculation. So I'm just going to speculate that. Gohan, as I said in this intro to this video, was a five-year-old that could headbutt harder than Blast that could nuke stars because he got yeah. angry. I'm in okay, no he got angry. surprised that after having his ultimate potential unleashed by gods, 
in training for so many years, he would eventually reach his own instinct-like power-up by this point. As he always could reach things, Goku and Vegeta couldn't with far less time and effort. Going from a power level of no more than 14,000 in Daizenshu 7 against Goldo on Namek, to literally punching a guy with a power level of 1 million in the face and comboing him like it's Dragon Ball Fighters <laughs> after getting mad just one time. And then I know, he was right? scrapping with that same guy after he transformed. After he transformed two times, two times more. After. Yep. Or even getting such a crazy amp as a Super Saiyan 2 nine-year-old that even with seven years of insanely intense training, Goku and Vegeta are still hyping up just how strong this kid actually was back then. Seven years later, and they're still talking about how he was that how guy. How strong he was, like he that guy. Nobody can beat him. He simply just did it again in this movie. And we all forgot that Gohan really was like that. Let's not forget, let's not forget, he was the only one that could actually possess the Z Sword. Can't forget about that. Cannot forget about that at all. Always trying to present, you know, always sit up here and he's able to possess the Z Sword. Um, only one that can actually do that, honestly. You know, can nobody else do it but him. Just like Toriyama said that he is. The conclusion, even after training with angels and learning an ultra instinct form and becoming the strongest in the universe to the point Goku surpasses a guy that required a Super Saiyan Blue level fusion just an arc ago to defeat and could beat down Jiren, Gohan surpasses them all by a massive portion. Remember that Goku tired out Jiren in just MUI or Master Ultra Instinct and surpassed okay. Broly from the Broly movie even before he learned true Ultra Instinct that could bully that form in all of the Granola Arc promotional material where he is stated to be the strongest in the universe alongside Vegeta. That Broly he surpassed in Granola would be stronger than the Broly movie version too, which may have already been stronger than Beerus, albeit I doubt they'll go with that <laughs> in, the final. in the anime version though. Broly would be stronger than Beerus, or at least Goku would be. As in the anime, Goku in MUI surpasses Beerus at the end of the Tournament of Power, and Beerus' own words, I'm not joking, Beerus himself literally internally monologues that in a guide, with Broly rivaling Beerus and Gogeta Blue completely dominating that as well. Meaning, at least using the anime, Gohan Beast might just Terminator Beerus as well as Goku and Vegeta. Probably oh, wow. Really? One. Yeah, just as the thumbnail suggests, they'd be lucky if Gohan didn't just blink them away after reading a book on how cool bugs are or something. It's pretty ridiculous. Well, at least, you know, Broly movie anime version. Goku, Vegeta, Beerus, Broly, and etc. Because after the Broly movie, okay. they'll be stronger. Yeah. The manga would be a little bit different, but blah, 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 blah. Anyway, although I would have liked it if he was more obvious that he trained more. So one last bit of copium that I think makes the movie make more sense for me. And this is okay. an interview I sort of found more recently from Toriyama. And that interview is that the Gammas in a lot of promotion material are hyped up as being able to compete with Goku and Vegeta. However, Toriyama makes a statement that's kind of interesting, and he says this. He says, My favorite character is Piccolo because of his quiet stoicism. It's rare to see him talk and run around as much as he does this time around. And this is also probably the first time he's got a proper transformation. Since he doesn't have any yeah. hair to stick straight up, I tried making him really buff and stuff instead, but I figured on its own this would make it kind of hard to tell you a transform, so I actually made him orange. Although there are probably still times when it's hard to tell the difference between this and his normal form. But this is where it gets interesting. He says, maybe I should have made it a bit more over the top, but personally, I'm just happy that he's finally obtained battle power on par with Goku and gang. Meaning that if you exactly. really want to get to the About very finally worst of it, time, he thinks that Orange Piccolo, which folded the Gamma in one hit, would be as strong as Goku and Vegeta. And then you can kind of see how when Orange Piccolo was like holding off Cell Max, but he was struggling really hard and eventually lost, that, that that's what would have happened to Goku and Vegeta if they tried to fight Cell Max one-on-one -on -one as well. So instead of the Gammas maybe being equal to Goku and Vegeta, Orange Piccolo being Goku and Vegeta level might make more sense. And as well as the fact that if there is a Tournament of Power 2, Orange Piccolo being 
at Goku and Vegeta's like instinct levels hmm. with the orange form would make a lot of sense as this would be like his orange form to even the playing field and that's sort of what Toriyama was kind of imagining in his head so the gammas might actually be blue Goku and Vegeta level and that's why Gohan was able to kind of fight him in just their ultimate state and then the orange one would be like the instinct levels although once again okay maybe I gotcha, I gotcha. just miscalculated as he just considered the Moro arc like their maximums where he couldn't properly gauge it or current blue Goku and Vegeta are just as strong as Ultra Instinct Goku from the past or something. Now that would be crazy, okay. but yeah. The facts are the facts. Gohan Beast is the strongest fight we've ever seen in history. Well, maybe disregarding Black Frieza as that statement was nah, can't, nah, Frieza can't, can't dis can't disregard that. Can't disregard that at all. It would have came after Black Frieza. But speaking of which, who do you guys think would actually win? Gohan Blanco or Black Frieza? Well, I actually have some interesting new information you guys might like on that, but I'll save that for next time. See you then. All right. Yeah, that's a that's that's very very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, that is a good question. I mean, leave that down in the comment section. Who do you think would be better? Because that would be interesting. I haven't gotten that far, but definitely would be interesting to know who would be have the upper hand on the fight, whether it's, you know, Black Freeze or either is Gohan Beast. So, yeah. That was a nice little, uh, I salute to, you know, Seth, Seth who, you know, piecing stuff together, making assumptions and, you know, through, you know, theoretical, you know, hypothesis and all that stuff on, you know, what could or what could not be and everything. At least he has some extra facts to back up on it, you know, with the creator and the writer of the, of the, um, the manga and all that other stuff. So think that i think you know think he's cool and everything like that he cool he got extra edge on you know insights on you know dragon ball and everything like that um most likely probably just sit up there and check out the rest of his videos so yep but other than that this is the end of the video if you already made it through this end thank you very much for watching all the way through and if not you know, hopefully I can win you over on another video that is coming up later on this day. I will be dropping uh, multiple videos during the day. If you are interested into my gaming live streams, I'm streaming live over there on Facebook Gaming. So without further ado, this is the last tidbit I'm saying on this video. Till next time, people. I'll see you in the next video.